blessings, everybody, and welcome to Answers. I'm Dale. Thank you so much for joining with me today. This is the program where we search out the Word of the Most High God uh, for the answers to questions that we all have day in and day out. And a lot of times we receive more than just answers. I say more often than not. We receive encouragement and exhortation through the Word. We receive uh, direction. We receive insight into things that we never really considered before. Uh, I just had an encounter with a guy just moments ago, right before we started uh, our program time here together. I was just out of the place of business and uh, walked in the door and he started going like this. You know, come over here. And I thought, wait a minute, do I know this guy? I don't think I know him. And so he said that he had just seen the program, the program we did last week, which we're following up on today. And uh, he said, I need what we were talking about last week. And I thought, well, what is, what is he talking about? And he said he needed healing. And I went, ah, oh, because we're, we're looking at some uh, things related to spiritual gifts. And I'm going to reread it again here in a moment. But one of the gifts is the gift of healing. And so I told him, I said, well, and he said, well, I've been to the doctor and the doctors told me that I'm healed now. And I went, well, that, that is great. But I told him we'd pray for him. Okay. His name is Mark. Okay, Mark. And so let's pray for Mark right now. Lord, I thank you for Mark. And I ask, Lord, that you would continue to touch him. Lord, that you would strengthen him and that your healing would continue to be upon him. I thank you for what you have walked him through up to this time. Lord, for the amazing things that you have revealed uh, to man uh, through medicine and for the medical teams that did the type of uh, procedure that they did upon him. It's, just, it's truly amazing. So, Father, I pray that you will continue to strengthen him, that as he continues to walk within you, that he will be complete and whole in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So thank you, Mark, for, for watching, for being with us. So what we're looking at is a, a subject matter that often brings division within the body of Christ, and there's nothing new about that. Okay, There's nothing new because we actually have instructions and account from the Scripture Do to the fact that there was division because of this. And you say, well, what are you talking about? Well, I'm talking about what Paul refers to in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12 as spirituals. Spirituals. We will call them spiritual gifts in the English language, in the English version of the Bible. It'll say spiritual gifts, and then the word gift is actually like an italics. What that means is that that word gift is not in the original language, but that we need it in our language to where we have an understanding about that which is being addressed. Okay? And so back in the early church, there was problems. Can you imagine if there was problems within the body of Christ? Hmm. Yeah, same way today. Okay? And one of the things they were dealing with in the church at Corinth was that people were exalting certain gifts of the Spirit. These are gifts that the Holy Spirit gives. And if the Lord tarries and we have enough time in future weeks, we will actually examine these various uh, uh, things that were occurring, what was happening in the church at Corinth. Now, the church at Corinth was amazing. If you remember last week in our time together, I told you how uh, uh, Paul said they had all the giftedness. Man, they had everything going for them. The Spirit was moving within them. God had saved them. But we really must understand that which they had been saved out of, okay? To, to say in that day that someone was acting as a Corinthian, that was the ultimate thing you say against somebody. I mean, the depth of debauchery of sin that they were involved in was absolutely, I would nearly say beyond things we could comprehend. I think we experienced the same type of thing today. But they were saved. They were saved. But they still had problems. Uh, there were factions within the body. Some were saying, oh, I'm of Peter. Some were saying, I'm of Paul. Others were saying, I'm of Apollos. And others were saying, I'm of Jesus. Paul says, did I die for you? Were you baptized in my name? No, he said there shouldn't be these type of divisions. But there were divisions. And he told them, y'all quit doing that. Okay? Then they were bearing with some sins. Okay? There was a guy that was having an affair with his father's wife. And the church was just going, oh, well, you know, we're saved by grace and, and it's okay. And Paul says, no, 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 that's not okay. Tell him he needs to repent. And let's see what else. We find out that they were, they were actually suing each other. Okay? There were people in the church suing one another going to pagan courts to try to, to work, try to work things out. And Paul was saying, isn't there somebody there that can work these things out among you? Well, obviously there was, but they were seeking the outside counsel rather than the counsel of the body of Christ. And so that's sort of the, the situation, sort of the background. When he gets to chapter 12, the first verse, it says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, so he's picking up and he's answering a lot of questions. He'd answer some previous questions about whether uh, they should let virgin daughters marry, okay? And, and what should happen in marriages if, uh, 
I say there's a couple and both of them are unsaved, both of them are pagans, but one gets saved. The question come up, do I stay? And Paul say, if they agreed to stay with you, then stay. If they leave because of your, because of your faith, then let them go. Okay? So he was answering questions about that type of thing. He comes along and they'd had some questions about what was happening and what was occurring in their worship time. You don't really see this right now, but you'll see it over in the 14th chapter. Things that were occurring during time of worship and how the Spirit was manifesting itself. How should they be handling certain kind of things? Or should they even handle it? Should it just be a, a time, of, a, a cacophony of praise? Or should there be some order and some structure? How should things come about? We'll see that at another time. And so we looked at the first... Um, 11 verses last week that basically describes how the Lord works and some spiritual gifts that are listed. This is not an exhaustive list of how the Spirit moves. As a matter of fact, you see uh, spiritual gifts addressed in um, uh, 1 Corinthians 12 and Romans 12 and Ephesians 4 and 1 Peter 4. Okay, all four of those passages speak and give us insight. But none of them claim to be uh, exhaustive insight. That's the reason you'll pick up one book and it'll say the nine gifts of the Spirit. And you'll pick up another book and it'll say there's 19 gifts of the Spirit. No, no, we don't get into that kind of thing. What we want to see is how the Holy Spirit moves. Paul brings forth some right here. In 1 Corinthians 12. But we see that God in all of his totality, Father, Son, and Spirit is involved. So let's do this. Let me read the first 11 verses that we, that we looked at in detail last week. Just to refresh our memory and then we'll pick up. Okay? So here's verse 1. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Now concerning, concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware. You know that when you were pagans, or as the King James says, when you were Gentiles, you were led astray to mute idols, however you were led. Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God says Jesus is accursed, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. Now, watch what's happening. You see, there's varieties of gifts. In other words, the Spirit manifests Himself and gifts people in different kinds of ways. There's variety of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of ministries and the same Lord. And there are varieties of effects or empowerments or supernatural powers. But the same God who works all things in all persons. So you see, the Spirit... You see the Lord, Jesus Christ, you see Father God, and you see varieties here of gifts, of ministries, and effects. But it's God who works all things in each and every and all persons who are saved. But to each one, and he's speaking to believers, but to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. The manifestation of the Spirit that is given, the giftedness of the Spirit, the way that He is moving in your life, if you're a believer, at this very moment, how He moves tomorrow, how He's moved in the past, all of that is given for the building up and the common good of the body of Christ. Now, sometimes people go too far in all these things. They'll say, well, then that gift has to be for somebody else. It can't be for you. No, that's not true either because you are a part of the body. You're a part of the common good. But the gift in this is for the building up of the body. That's really important as we go along. We'll see this. So here's verse 8. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit. So this is where you start seeing some of the gifts being named. We see one, a word of wisdom. And to another, a word of knowledge, according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. And to another, gifts. Remember, gifts more than one. Gifts of healing by the one Spirit. And to another, the affecting of miracles. And to another, prophecy. And to another, the distinguishing of spirits. To another, various kinds of tongues. And to another, interpretation of tongues. Now, when you read that list right there in those uh, three verses, verses 8, 9, and 10, Immediately, people have all sorts of questions. Immediately, bells start going off in people's heads and they start going, well, I don't know if I believe that. My church says this. Those things were just for that time back then. And those are, a lot of times, they're called sign gifts. Okay? It's amazing how man will come along and give a label and give a title to something which is totally unscriptural. Okay? And then they'll say, okay, 
uh, this is for this, and it was just for a sign for that time, and it's no longer applied today. We need to just strictly stick with what the Word says, okay? When you look at the totality of what the Word says, I believe that every one of these are functioning today. Every one of them the Lord desires to do within the body of Christ. And so you will see that these are things that are given. The big picture, understand, is that they're given by the Spirit, and they're given to each one. Now watch what he says in the next verse. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually just as He wills. Okay, distributing to the individual just as the Spirit desires for it to be done. Okay? Now that's really important to understand. Let me just give you a, a picture of some things right here and understanding about some stuff. A lot of times people will say, well, if you're saved, the Holy Spirit dwells within you, and you have at least one spiritual gift. Well, that's absolutely true. That's absolutely true. If the Holy Spirit is within you, then you are gifted by the Spirit. But I think a lot of times when we say that in that way that you have at least one spiritual gift, then we're starting to uh, sort of limit the Holy Spirit. So, okay, I've got one gift right here. I've got two. And this is how God uses me. And thus far and no more. We may not say that verbally, but a lot of times in the way that we act, we come across that way in our relationship to God and the Spirit. And we'll close off something. And so if the Lord has never used us within the arena of healing, then we don't even think about that. and We don't even want to touch that. We don't even want to go there. If the Lord has not given us a word of knowledge, whatever that may be, we spoke a little bit about last week about that. what that is. It's basically that you have knowledge and insight into something, and you had no other way of knowing what that was. The Lord just tells you something. Okay? But if you've never experienced that or you don't believe that, then you probably will not be open to the Spirit moving that way in your life. Oh, what about the ones that people always get all upset about? What do you do with the tongues? What do you do with the speaking in tongues? What do you do with the interpreting of tongues? The fact that there's a giftedness here of interpretation of tongues gives us real insight as to what the, the gift of tongues might actually be. We'll look at that more when we get over in the 14th chapter of 1 Corinthians, okay? But they're both valid gifts. They're both for today. Here is sort of the way I view it. This is just me, okay? This just popped into my mind uh, years ago, and it's helped me to understand some stuff. I don't even want to blame God for it. If, if the Lord granted it to me, thank you, Lord, for the picture in my mind that I understand. If it's not of you, God, I don't want to blame you. <laughs> no joke. Uh, I think that we do, that the Spirit will grant unto us giftedness, and you may have primary giftedness, okay? So let's say that the Lord has granted unto you a primary giftedness of uh, teaching. Okay, of teaching. And the Lord's really uh, moved within you where you're able to teach. Well, I think that very well could be the backdrop. Let's think of the artist. You know when the artist is painting? Uh, think of the scenes you saw in the old cartoons where the artist would have his palette right here with all the colors. You know, you'd have the red, you'd have the yellow, you have the green, you have the ochre, you have the brown, you have the black, you have all these little spots that are colors. Okay? And here's the way I sort of view this, is that the backdrop of the canvas that the uh, artist is painting on may be blue, let's say. Let's say that backdrop is blue. And so your main giftedness may be teaching. And so the main backdrop of your giftedness may be teaching. I want to be open to the Holy Spirit. To where if my main back, my strength, what the Lord's granted to me is teaching, I want to be open to where the Lord can use whatever He wants to off His palate of the Spirit. And so he may come that day, and you know how the artist does that. They'll get their little uh, uh, brush right there, and they may dip a little red right there, and they'll dip a little yellow and a little green and swirl it all together and paint some up there. So that day, the Lord, he may never have done it before in my life, but he may come along and say, I need somebody to be healed over here, and I want to move through someone right here. And he may get that little red thing of healing right there and paint your life with that gift of healing. It may be for that moment, for that one individual, and never again will the Spirit move through you in that way. Okay? He may do it that way. Or He may grant that gift to where when you pray for people, when you speak things, that healing comes upon them. Now, there's all sorts of questions that come up with this. I'm totally aware of that. Okay? All sorts of questions that will pop in your mind. That's good. Take them to the Word. Take them before the Lord. A lot of times people will say this. Okay? They'll say something like this. Well, if you have the spiritual gift of healing, then why are you not over at the hospital praying for everybody? And why is everybody not arising up and being healed? Start with, it's a good question. Okay? A lot of times it's asked with a particularly religious, malicious intent. 
Okay, when it is asked. But if the Lord has granted that giftedness and that giftedness is flowing within you, and you know that in times past when you've prayed for people to be healed, if they were healed, then you need to be doing what? Praying for people that are sick. And you say, well, I didn't feel like the Spirit led me to do that. Well, that's fine. If the Spirit leads you to do it, you do it. If you're not sure, then you do it because you have experienced that before. But don't make the mistake that just because the Holy Spirit has gifted you with something, that you just turn this on and then it's just like you implement it, then it has to be done. I've had somebody say that to me before, and this person was, a, let's say they're a great teacher or a great preacher, okay? And so the question I have is this. Well, if you're gifted by the Lord to teach and to preach, then why doesn't everybody that you preach to get saved? And why doesn't everybody that you teach understand and believe what the Word says? You see what I'm saying? Our role and responsibility is to function within the giftedness of the Lord. Just the way he says right here that each one individually, the Spirit gives. So one day, he may come along and say, hey, I want to paint your life like this with my Spirit. So what giftedness do I have right now? If someone asks you, what are your gifts of the Spirit? I would say this, the Spirit. It's the Spirit of the Lord. Whatever He wants to grant, whatever He wants to do, I want that. I don't want to limit it. I don't, I don't want to come back and say, okay, here are my three gifts right here. This is how God uses me. And thus far and no more. No, no, no. I don't want to do that. I want to be open to what it said right here in this last verse. To one, the same Spirit works all these things, distributing each one of these gifts individually as He wills. My giftedness is this. Lord, I want what Your will is here. Okay. Tell you what, let's take a break and we'll pick up a few more verses understanding what spiritual gifts is. I'll be right back. You have always wanted to play the piano, but thought it was too late. Or, in the past you played the piano, but you do not play anymore. Or, you've always considered yourself to be unmusical, yet there is something driving you to express yourself through music. It is not too late. Now is the time. Simply Music has come to Alabama. Cullman is the only Alabama location of this revolutionary method. Come, join us, make music. Welcome back to Answers. We're in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Looking at what Paul is saying about spirituals, okay? Now let's pick up at verse 12 right here. Because he gives an example to them that everybody can understand. And you say, well, how do you know that everybody can understand? Because you hear, and I've said it many times right here, describing the church as the body of Christ. The Lord uses that picture of the body because every human has a body. In some form or fashion, every human has a body. So watch what he does here, verse 12. For even as the body is one, and yet has many members, and all the members of the body, though they are many, are one body, so also is Christ. So he's saying, even though we have this body right here, and it has many members, whether it's ears or nose or fingers, has many members, these members are all one. And he says, so also is the body of Christ. For by one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, whether Jew or Greek, whether slave or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. So he's saying this, if you're truly saved, you are of the one body, you are of the body of Christ universal. Okay. Then he says this, verse 14, For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot says, because I am not a hand, I'm not a part of the body, it is not for this reason any less a part of the body. And if the ear says, because I am not an eye, I'm not a part of the body, it is not for this reason any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole were hearing, 
where would the sense of smell be? You see the picture he's painting? And so often we do that as the body of Christ. We go, well, well no, I'm, I'm nothing. I'm just a little toe in the body of Christ. You know, I'm just, no, I'm not important. There's nothing. You ever had a broke little toe? Yeah. If you ask people who are living life without toes, big toes, and like you find out how important they are for balance and things like that, what he's saying is you can't come along and say just because I'm an eye that I'm of no use. Or you can't come along and say because I'm an ear and I hear from God that I'm the total body. No, 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 no. We need one another and each member needs. Watch what he says here. This is verse 18. But now... God has placed the members, each one of them, in the body, just as He desired. We saw earlier that the Spirit grants the gifts just as He sees and just as He desires to do. The same thing right here. As God desires, He's given that giftedness to the body. The giftedness that is in your life is what He's desired. You're not to be jealous of somebody else's giftedness. You're not to reject the giftedness that you have. It's what God has desired. Now watch this. If they were all one member, where would the body be? But now, there are many members, but one body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Or again, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, it is much truer that the members of the body, which seem to be weaker... And those members of the body which we deem less honorable, on these we bestow more abundant honor. And our less presentable members become much more presentable, whereas our more presentable members have no need of it. And you say, what is that all about? Here's what it's saying. Okay, Here's what he's saying right here. It's the things that are the less honorable members. He's talking about things which are less attractive. For instance, most of us would dare say that a liver is not a very attractive thing. And the liver is on the inside of our body and we can't see it. We cannot live without the liver. Okay? You can live without a finger, a hand, an eye, an ear, a beautiful face, hair. Okay? But what he's saying is the things that are less presentable, the things that are less honorable in our sight are more important. He says, you're looking at it the wrong way. Just don't look at the pretty stuff. Don't just look at the showy things. Okay? We'll see more about that later. But God has so composed the body, given more abundant honor to that member which lack, so that there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. Quite often the Lord will gift somebody within an arena, and it's just amazing to see. For instance, they may not be a teacher. I'm using teaching as an example today. They may not be a teacher, okay? A lot of times somebody will say, well, God is their vocation leader, a school teacher, something like that, so they must have the spiritual gift of teaching. No, no, not necessarily. God's common grace to teach may be upon them. They can teach in school, and that's fine, okay? And they do a good job of it. But they may not be gifted by the Spirit. In the list we had right here, you notice that these are all things we're supposed to do anyway. You're supposed to have faith. You have to have faith to be saved, but there's a spiritual gift of faith. And a lot of times the Lord would grant to somebody, say, the spiritual gift of teaching when they're not able to teach anything else. But when it comes to the Word of God or something, He grants that. And they have revelation and insight that's amazing because it comes from the Lord. And the Lord loves doing that. And He does it for the purpose to where there'll be no division within the body and where we can care for one another. Okay. In other words, those that are sort of have a tendency to exalt themselves, He will bring them down. And the ones that are saying, well, not, not, no, God's not doing anything, He will bring an exalted gift into their life. Okay? We'll see more about this as we go. Verse 26. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. If one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now let me read these last uh, four verses right here. We'll pick up with these next time as we continue looking at other passages. Now, you are Christ's body. That's what it says right here. You are Christ's body. And individually members of it. So you're an individual member of Christ's body. And God has appointed in the church. So the Lord has given some structure. He's given some appointment. First, apostles. Second, prophets. Third, teachers. Then, miracles. Then, gifts of healing. Helps. Administrations. Various kinds of tongues. So here's another little listing right here of how God has appointed and how there's a functioning of the spiritual gifts. And it gets sort of interesting. We'll see this more over in Ephesians 4 to where there will be a title, for lack of a better term, and I don't like that term. There will be an office, for lack of a better term, I don't like that term. Both those terms are sort of incomplete and give the wrong idea. But there, there's a position right there 
people. Say pastor, for instance. Most of us are aware of that. But it's really not a spiritual gift of pastor. It's just a functioning within the body of Christ <coughs> to a particular purpose, the building up of the body. But that that pastor functioning may be endowed with various spiritual gifts. Okay, we'll see more about that when we get to it. Right here, he's just saying there's some structure of how God's done some things. Apostle, prophets, teachers, miracles, gifts of healing, helps, administrations, kinds of tongues. And then he says this, all are not apostles, are they? All are not prophets, are they? And the unsaid answer is no, no. All are not teachers, are they? All are not workers of miracles, are they? It's a spiritual giftedness and empowering to work miracles. That's wild, to work miracles. All do not have gifts of healing, do they? All do not speak with tongues, do they? All do not interpret, do they? So he's picking up these lists that he'd done earlier and later. Right? And he's saying not everybody has the same giftedness. Okay, We have different kinds of gifts. Now watch these two very important things. Last thing we'll, sh- we'll share today, our time's up. But earnestly desire the greater gifts. Uh oh, something happened out there. He's telling them to earnestly desire. In other words, it is okay to desire and pursue these, but desire the greater gifts. That tells you that there's a greater gift and a lesser gift. I'll tell you right now, tongues is the lesser gift. He just mentions it sort of the last right here, and you'll see that later on. And then, so this is verse 31, but earnestly desire the greater gifts, and I show you still a more excellent way. A more excellent way of what? Of the body of Christ functioning together. The body of Christ functions together through the giftedness of the Spirit. But the next thing that he says is the next chapter. I show you still a more excellent way. 1 Corinthians 13. The great chapter on love. What is the more excellent way? The way of love. You can function with all of this, but if you not functioning within the love of the Most High God for one another. You're a clanging gong and a crashing cymbal. And so 1 Corinthians 12, he describes these spirituals. 13, he shows us a more excellent way. Then in chapter 14, he gives us another example of, uh, of a higher gift and a lower gift. Prophesying and speaking in tongues. We'll talk more about that next week. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you for the gift in this that you have released to your body. And Lord, I pray that we will each and every one desire and pursue that which you have granted in our life to your praise and your honor and your glory alone. Amen. Amen. Thank you all so much for being with me. And I'll see you again next time. Goodbye.